Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to disassemble the actuating mechanism on this Ronson d Light Junior Sport. The Flint wheel doesn't appear to have any pressure on it, even though the flint spring screw is tightened all the way down. So we will go ahead and remove the flint spring and flint spring screw. So that we don't have any undue pressure forcing our mechanism upward as we disassemble it. We're not pulling the fulcrum screw out yet so you shouldn't have to worry too much about having pressure up here at the top. Just want to have a firm hold on it and also don't want to mar up your fulcrum screw if you can avoid it. So. Choose your screwdriver wisely. We'll back this fulcrum screw out. It is just threaded into the backside post. You can see there, there is no fulcrum cap. Now you want to hold the pressure because your piston spring down here under the thumb lever will want to force the mechanism up. So keep that pressure there. Get your fulcrum screw out. And this whole mechanism should come up and out. Leave that spring in place now we have our thumb lever and then your typical Ronson outside full gears got our file wheel and the clutch spring is integrated there underneath the snuffer cap that will work with the teeth on the side of the wheel to engage as it is intended to there you can see our obstruction so we will go ahead and work on that Our spring it shouldn't make any difference which direction I don't think but we'll make sure and get it back in there in the right direction anyway so we're just going to well we might as well go ahead and just test it first and see if it'll push and it pretty much is just falling apart there So we're not even going to need the drill as far as actually breaking it up, just maybe to make sure and get the upper part of that cleaned out as best we can. Just spin it by hand here. Make sure that any old degraded flint that was clinging to the side of the tube isn't doing that any longer. So you can see that is all appears to be cleared out and unobstructed. I'm going to get a toothpick 
and a couple of common household disinfectant wipes just kind of clean up the top of the slider before we put that upper mechanism back on. There's plenty of buildup. Pretty nasty for how clean that lighter really looks. How nice and shiny that chrome is. But yeah, that's pretty, pretty filthy. From looking at the Toledo Bend BCL site, these were first made in 1928. And there is an example on that site of one of the same design and style of this one with the monogram cut out inside of the leather. But it didn't have a date on that one. And this leather on here certainly isn't perfect. And I'm going to do my best not to damage that any further. Take the blunt end of the toothpick, go around, try to get all the build up and grime that we can, because otherwise we're just covering it back up. But it does look like some of that has corroded through the plating, maybe. So we can get this lighter put back together. Fuel it and light it up. So now that we have our snuffer with, well, let's go ahead and clean out that wheel a little bit. That actually came off there pretty nice. See where the blade of that small blade of that precision screwdriver really did a good job on that. It was very scaly. That flint residue. So we'll get our file wheel back up inside the snuffer you can see the clutch spring up there underneath the snuffer cap protruding backward where it will make contact with those teeth when it is necessary we'll go ahead and get our side gears in place Okay, so we've got the 
gears there on the back side gear on the front side file wheel in place I'm going to take just a second and just clean some of the grime and grease off of this fulcrum screw. So we got our spring, piston spring and thumb lever down the tube we have our snuffer assembly with the file wheel and the side gears in place Get that timed with the thumb lever and down into place got it all the way through there as we mentioned there is no fulcrum cap so this will just thread into that backside post and that'll be tight enough So there's our mechanism moving freely as it should. A brand new flint courtesy of our friend Robert Hollingsworth down the tube. Go ahead and groove that flint. Flint spring tightened all the way on down. Get our fuel cap open. It is missing the spare flint compartment see if we can do this without making a mess maybe And I think that should be about enough. Maybe a little bit more. Get our fuel cap back in place. And tighten down. 
It doesn't appear as though I really leaked any out here on the surface. Now whether or not I got enough in there for it to light will be another story. So, as you can see, Jacob, sometimes I am overcautious. And it is worth taking note also. This is what I was trying to weigh as I was feeling the side to see if I could feel the coolness of the fluid down in the bottom of the tank or the top of the tank as I'm holding it upside down is that this is a bigger lighter than most of the Ronson standard type Ronson D light it's a bigger tank than I mean almost twice as big I'd say well, who knows? Maybe not as wide. It is a taller than usual Ronson automatic type lighter. Until next time. I'm going to pull that wick up just a little bit. I can get a hold of it. Yep, definitely got a hold of it. Okay. That should be good. So, a little wick maintenance while we're at it. Until next time.